one of the things that's coming out of this outbreak is seeing all the Democrats and people in the media who are apparently aligned with China. And I'm not really surprised, especially over at MSNBC, where they had almost nothing but glowing things to say about Fidel Castro when he died. Everyone over at MSNBC is a communist or socialist to a varying degree. They just go, oh my gosh, socialist, I can't have that. It's going to take all my money. So the first clip I have here today is from MSNBC, of course, and it's Stephanie Rule, who has a long history of being a left-wing hack. In this case, she puts on this theatric performance to deflect legitimate criticism that's come from Mark Rubio about the media's cozy relationship with China. With all due respect, sir, you're not immune to finger pointing yourself. Earlier this week, you called out people that share my job, and I, I do have to share your tweet in its entirety. Beyond being grotesque, it's bad journalism. I need to ask you this because I'm a journalist. We're not just some uh, 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 personalities. You called out journalism. And I need to understand why on earth you did this. Yeah, because how dare you criticize a journalist? As we all know, journalists are above criticism. And just take notice of the attitude on this hack. When have you ever seen her talk to a Democrat like this? It's never happened. Because there are some journalists that were doing exactly what I said. And I posted some of their tweets. This is an ongoing deal here what we're dealing with right now. And that is a Chinese propaganda effort to put out that they have handled this perfectly and we have not. Honestly, I'm not a huge fan of Mark Rubio, but he absolutely nailed it here. There's definitely something going on between the Democrats and the media, as if China has some sort of control over them. But I also think it's a case of the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Rubio gave some good examples, but there's many, many more. We'll get right back to exposing this latest media con job, but first I have an important message for all my viewers. The world we live in today is in flux, filled with a flood of information that's often as much gossip as fact making it hard to know what the real situation is, making it easy for people to panic and make bad decisions. The only way not to get caught up in that chaos is to have a plan allowing you to avoid dealing with empty store shelves, long lines, and in the worst case, desperate people. Use today to prepare. A great place to start is storing food in your home. I'm prepared and I ordered even more recently. With this unprecedented emergency, orders are being delayed, sometimes eight weeks or more. I urge you to add your order to mine today. Take action so you're ready for what's coming and save $70 on a two-week emergency food kit when you go to my special website, preparewithdronetech.com. Those that know what's coming are preparing today. Go to preparewithdronetech.com. That's preparewithdronetech.com. How about the publicly funded PBS, where during a segment called Race Matters, they brought on a representative of the group Chinese for Affirmative Action. She proceeded to attack Trump as a racist and claimed that he was putting people in harm's way by pinning the virus on China. How odd that our media is carrying water for China, even despite our intelligence agencies, who they normally worship, reporting that China vastly underreported coronavirus deaths, causing the virus to spread even more. Why are our tax dollars going to pay for what is essentially Chinese propaganda? I got to ask you about some of the rhetoric coming from the highest office in the land. President Trump himself has publicly referred to the virus, linking it to China, despite the fact that health experts here and across the world have said that that kind of rhetoric is dangerous. I want well, we think that it, his uh, insistence in the past of using or referencing the Chinese virus or other administration officials referring to it as the Wuhan virus um, certainly exacerbates the situation. How about New York Times columnist Paul Krugman, who literally parroted the Chinese government and was attacking his own country? Likely in a drunken haze, he tweeted out, quote, America's response to the coronavirus is the worst in the world which is shocking and has a lot to do with a leader who is completely unfit, temperamentally and intellectually for the job. This graph that Paul Krugman presents is essentially Chinese propaganda and shows the virus trajectory as less severe than in America, which is dubious for many reasons, not least of which the fact that China decided that they would no longer count confirmed cases, those patients who test positive but don't show symptoms. Another thing Krugman doesn't mention is that America's jump in cases is due in large part to increased testing. These people are a broken 
broken record when it comes to throwing their own country under the bus so they can attack their political opponents. And they're sounding more and more like the Communist Chinese Party. Or how about back over at MSNBC, where one of their hosts is clearly relieved that a Democrat pulled out of a House resolution condemning China's authoritarian regime for its mishandling of the coronavirus pandemic. It's almost too much for the mind to comprehend. These are the exact same people that for the last four years have been fear-mongering about Russia and who are now carrying the water of an authoritarian communist regime. The Democrat pulling his support from a resolution condemning China and the media hack advancing China's narrative that calling it the Chinese virus is racist or that China has somehow handled this all better than the United States. Is it just me or does it seem like China already invaded and won? Does China own these people or have dirt on them? That's been a popular media charge that Trump and the Republicans are compromised by Russia somehow. And we know they always accuse their opponents of what they're actually guilty of. This host on MSNBC is the same Chinese stooge that brought on a woman to accuse the religious right of being to blame for spreading this virus. In fact, you're arguing there's uh, more to the responses that we're seeing, which is religious nationalism. Uh, you have a New York Times op-ed titled, The Religious Rights Hostility to Science is crippling our coronavirus response. There are a number of ways in which the religious right bears some responsibility for the current incompetence in our national response. First and foremost, the movement promotes an anti-science culture that rejects the evidence of science, rejects expertise and critical thinking, and that has obviously contributed to our ability to address this issue. That's funny. De Blasio certainly isn't right wing. The left wing mayor of New Orleans clearly isn't right wing. The Spanish and the Italians aren't right wing. I'm sure the Chinese communist government that puts its religious minorities into re-education camps is quite happy with its lapdogs deflecting focus for them and putting it on to religious people in the U.S. Not to mention the political opposition to the Democrat Party. That's all for this episode. If you feel like hitting that like button, please do. It really helps the video and if you subscribe, make sure you hit that bell icon so that you receive notifications. I don't think you'll see my new content otherwise. If you enjoy my content and you agree with my mission, please consider supporting me on one of these platforms. You can find all the links in the description and pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.